Oh, shit. If I see a crab, I'm going to yell crab. Some may see the Bahamas as a money trap overrun with tourists. Do you have a conch? Yes! I say, crab. in the Bahamas, you'll find whatever you're looking for. Oh, I hear a board. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Holy Our Caribbean culinary adventure continues here on the Bahamas' sparsely populated Andros Island. Last time, I earned my dinner by tracking down and hunting mud crabs in the middle of the night. It's too easy. Oh, always pissed. Today, we're taking hunting to a whole new level. The forest here is really thick. If we go in the forest, how are you going to get through? In this tourist-driven country, I'm about to experience what no traveler has experienced before. What is the most dangerous part of what we're doing today? You might come across a big male one. Sometimes they try to run from the dogs and they run into you. Yeah. You're getting attacked by the boar. Yeah. And it all starts here. Sir, good morning. Good morning, sir. Jerome, Gerard, this is fantastic. We're on a beach right now in Andros Island in the Bahamas. Today, we're gonna do something special. We're going after a boar today. Go try to catch some. I hope so, or else we got no video. Yo. Why do you hunt? I do it for a job. If we catch one, say about 100 pounds, we're gonna sell them for 200 or 150. You sell the meat? Sell the meat. I wanted to ask about how you do this, because when I was in Alabama, I went hog hunting, and I had a deer rifle, and I drove around on a golf cart until we found some hogs to shoot. Here's a completely different story. Here you're hunting with dogs. How do they know if they're hunting or just going out to, know. you know, be taken to the bathroom? They know what they're doing. I start putting on my hunting clothes. They know what's going on. It's challenging, it's risky, it's not for the faint of heart. Here, the plan will go like this. The hunter releases his dogs. The dogs search for a scent and track down a wild hog. When they find one, they pin it down until the hunter catches up and finishes the job. So where do I come in today? How can I help? Yeah, I'd like to give you a chance to take the ball from them. What is this for? To tie the legs together. Just that? Yeah. I thought you were using a gun. I don't like hunt with guns. You've never been bit? No, I don't afraid them at all. <laughs> so today I don't have a knife, I don't have a gun. We're gonna hunt down a wild boar and I'm armed yeah. with this. I just want to <laughs> make that clear to everybody. <laughs> We are on our way to the hunting spot. I've got my piece of string with me. That's my weapon today. I got a mask and gloves. Why do I need a mask? Not to protect you from mosquitoes. I'm not. I don't need protection from mosquitoes. No? We're freaking hunters and <laughs> gatherers, but mostly hunters. Andros Island runs about 100 miles by 45 miles. Although the island has a distinct outline, it is highly fragmented. It's a flat, heavily forested island, which makes it the perfect home for wild boar. Dogs are coming off. Oh shit, they're taking off. Jerome has been hunting wild boar in Andros for over 30 years. Oh shit. He's trained over 25 dogs, rotating them for each hunt. Today we've got Lacey, Jet, Dexter, and Max. Are they hunting or playing? They just seem like they're having a good time. That one's taking a piss. Oh. They still sniffing. Hmm, they're going in here now. These are a curtight dog, bred in the USA, known for their incredible tracking ability. In the right conditions, they can follow a scent for miles. Jerome, where you at? Where's Jerome? Jerome! Where's anybody? I'm gonna scroll Instagram until someone calls me and tells me what to do. Ah, Gary V, inspirational. Man, they saw about 10. Those small ones. Oh, piglets. Yeah, and then two big ones. They were up. Oh, you saw a whole side. family. Maybe they're on a picnic. An invasive species with no natural predators, wild boars are destructive beasts, destroying crops and the homes of wildlife by trampling and rooting. They can eat anything. They mate like crazy, and they're impossible to make extinct. So if you feel bad that these animals are being hunted, you shouldn't. Plus, a wild boar paired with the right chef will make for one of the best dinners of your summer. But before we eat, we've got a lot of work to do. These are some pig tracks. How do you know it's a pig track and not yeah. a dog track? See, the, the pig and how two oh. horse. Yeah. The dog and how like, you know? Yeah, that's the pig track. Oh man, yeah. I would've completely missed that, yeah. According to Jerome, this is a spot where pigs likely pass through to drink fresh water early this morning. Right now, the hog could be anywhere in this area. 
That's what I'm hoping. The dogs lead the way, looking for a scent to chase down. Look at this one over here, he's not hunting at all. Go hunt, get a pig. Our job is to follow and not lose them. The dogs just went into there. Easier said than done. If you lose them, or in my case, when we lose them. Is there anything in here? You either follow your gut or hope they call out. Watch your eyes. science behind it. I don't know the strategy. It's like sometimes he leads, sometimes the dogs lead. But this is not easy work at all. This is exactly what the wild boars want. Our pack is divided and already in disarray. This forest is super thick. Pig can get through here easy. Five times faster than a human. Probably twice as fast as a dog. So that's why he needs four of them. Right now we're just listening. See if anything's rustling. See if any dogs bark. But once again, nothing. In the world of hunting, wind is everything. It can hide or expose you before you're even within eye shot. Too much wind can mean the dogs won't be able to accurately follow a scent for long. If I'm being honest, I don't think it's in the cards for today. So, bad news. Hunting is high risk, high reward. Today, more on the risk side. We went out for a few hours, we tried our best, nothing. And I don't know how it works exactly because the dogs just kind of run around. Sometimes it seems like they're going after something. Sometimes it seems like they're just playing and having a good time. He's not really communicating with the dogs. Sometimes he's following them. Sometimes they're following him. I'm not sure like how organized a process this is. I would say it's more of an art than a science. Maybe it's just luck. I don't know. We don't have a poor, but I think we can order a poor. <laughs> we still need a video. So I think we should have done this from the beginning. It was my fault, it's my mistake. Uh, we shouldn't be out here hunting, following dogs around, trying to lasso pigs by their feet. No, instead we're gonna do it the smart way, have someone bring a boar to us. Like Uber Eats, but with live animals. I'm not sure who's bringing it, but someone is gonna bring a wild boar. We're gonna eat some wild boar today, gosh dang it. All right. I can't win them all. Want to cross the road, boy? Alright, I was told he just found a pig. Oh, I hear it. Oh, sh Holy. Oh, it's huge. Approaching the boar, it's surrounded by four dogs. But all it would take is one swift movement for it to slip away. I know that speed is essential. And I'm not going to let a little thing like having no idea what I'm doing stop me from committing 100% to this moment. I got my string! Yeah. <laughs> Holy sh... I grab the boar's back leg because it's the farthest from its teeth. Then I try to flip it over to break its leverage. I remember something about a string and tying it up. Huh? We don't tie it. Yeah, great. Watch out, watch out. Show me how to tie it. <laughs> Break your wrist, you gotta put too much pressure on him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Underneath there, set it. Okay. Double it. Yeah. Now uh -huh. I get to put this in. You do the same thing. Oh. Tie it twice. Uh -huh. Turns out you don't tie the back legs together. It's front back, front back. Uh -huh. Now we flip it more. If it's not tight, it takes no time for the board to turn and jet. Same thing with that rope. Got it. My man, yeah. how'd you guys do it? We split up, you went your own way. I hear you yelling, I hear the pig, I hear dogs yeah. barking, we come here. What happened? You was in the road sitting down, and then the dog ran through, we was like, oh, let this be the one, let this be the one. 
And all of a sudden, like, two of the dogs was through first, at first. And then the other two went through after they heard those two barking. And then we went through. And we heard a pig start squealing. When we get there, they was around them. She tried to fight, but you know, she couldn't win that battle. Dogs are okay? Yeah. Oh, they look proud and tired. Yeah. They always surprise me. Yeah, they look cute they... and fluffy until it's time for action. <laughs> then the dogs got real vicious real yeah. quick. Yeah. Hey, good job. Yeah. What's next? How do you carry it from here? <laughs> Holy shit. Hunting doesn't give out merit badges or trophies for doing your best. Either you eat or you don't. Some may say that in this modern world, hunting is a vestige of a less civilized past. But Jerome, who feeds his family by tracking, hunting, and selling boar meat, he would have to disagree. With the boar in tow, plans for a major feast have begun. Soon, this animal will feed dozens of locals in the community. To start, Jerome boils a large pot of water, dipping the hog in, then scraping away its hair and outer layer of skin. He collects the boar's internal organs, cleans it, and finally, it's sectioned into smaller pieces and left to boil for an hour. While it boils, we're heading to a nearby beach for another special, daring, tropical treat. Solomon, put it there. Hey, brother. Do you know what I like about barracudas? You don't have to track them down in the goddamn forest. Ah, oh, boy, I know what you mean. Barracuda is a long, thin, and ferocious-looking fish living near the coast in subtropical seas. I tried it once in Mexico City. <laughs> In the Bahamas, in no uncertain terms, it is advised that you only eat this fish at your own risk. Well, they eat something off the reef, something that's called cigatera. It's actually natural toxins that are built up from algae that smaller fish around the reefs eat. And then these being the predator fish, they eat those fish and that's how they get contaminated. I've been told in the Bahamas, it's kind of a rite of passage to eat the barracuda. It means that you're not afraid. You're ready to take on the risk of potentially poisoning yourself. You're taking on the risk of death. All right, I'll do it. Solomon is a fisherman and fishing guide okay. for dudes who wear boat shoes and sweater vests. Oh, wow. You know, I'm not no. sure that I'm sitting in the right area. With years of seafood catching and eating experience, I hope he chose the right one. You kind of tell too sometimes is you watch the natural stuff again. Mm. So if the flies don't come, it's poison. Are you also saying that anything a fly lands on is something you would eat? That's a good question. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Solomon slices the barracuda, making two giant fillets. He cleans it, then cuts it into bite-sized pieces before applying his own seasoning blend. It's shallow fried in hot oil on both sides until it's golden brown. It's hot, juicy, and most likely poison-free. Solomon? Yes? This is a big moment. There were flies landing on this barracuda, yeah. which we've established is a good thing. So, if it's poisonous, I'm gonna know pretty soon. We're on Andros. There's no hospital. No. If you get poisoned, you have to go online, book an airplane ticket, get a PCR test, go at 5 a.m., get on the plane. You're dead. <laughs> I can feel the outside. It feels a little bit crispy. I can feel the seasoning yeah, kind yeah. of baked in there. Let's try it out. That is delicious. I'm a great fan of barracuda, <laughs> man. This is so different from other fried fish. I think a lot of fried fish really depends on a huge, flaky, crunchy batter. Yeah. And sometimes there's more batter than actual fish. Then people are smothering it, tartar sauce, and it's yeah. like, there was no point in having the fish in the first place. Here, there's no like big, thick batter no. on there. Just a little bit of a crunch right. and a ton of fresh fish yes. and delicious seasoning. Mm -hmm. Where'd you learn this recipe? I do a lot of cooking, so you know, you get to experiment with stuff and if it works out, you keep it. If it doesn't, you throw out the dough. That's why I like about everybody on this island, they find a way to make it work. And a lot of people are getting their own food, you're getting your own fish. The other day I got my own crabs, and today we got a boar. And so everybody's figuring out, everybody has their own ways, their own traditions, or their own twist on the tradition yeah, when yeah. they cook food. Yeah. Mm. 
So far, so good. So good, I see he's still standing. I think no issue. Not at all. Back to the boar. After boiling for an hour, it's brought to Mount Pleasant Fishing Village. Jerome and Gerard woke up at 3 a.m. this morning, so they've decided to duck out early, but not before rewarding their dogs with some boar meat. Now, it's all Emerson, who we met in our last video. He's a trained chef who decided to settle on Andros to enjoy a more tranquil lifestyle after years of working in the Bahamas hotel industry. Today, he's cooking this boar into several dishes, culminating in a community feast. First up, grilled boar ribs. The ribs are boiled with herbs and spices to tenderize the meat before it's marinated in Emerson's secret homemade barbecue sauce. A sauce so secret, he won't tell me what's in it. Toss it on an open fire and grill to perfection. Ever since. Sunny. Boar chef extraordinaire. Is this your first boar? Actually, it's the first one we caught in a while and brought out there. But I cooked boar in uh, hotels before. Do you think there's going to be a difference between the wild boar and a domesticated boar? Yeah, normally they do taste a little different. With the natural boar, they have like a more natural flavor. Better. All right, yeah. let's see. Oh man, that's so delicious. Sweet, tangy barbecue sauce. It's coming, it's just quite tender actually. Oh, there we go, I got another piece right here. Boiling, I think it's really rendered down the fat a bit, and then it's just a nice crisp on the outside. Every time I eat a wild boar, I feel like the, the texture of the fat is a little bit different. There's just something like bubbly and a little bit unusual about the fat. I think it's what they eat, the native food. I think that really play a big role in it. Mm. It's hard to believe that just a couple hours ago, I had my knee on this boar's neck, and man, it was completely worth it. Dinner is almost ready. Emerson finishing up with the starter, boar soup. He sears the boar meat in hot oil, then adds homemade broth that bubbles up along with onions, carrots, Irish potatoes, and cassava. He's seasoned with salt, pepper, lime, and bay leaves. Time to eat. As the dinner bell rings out, members of the community trickle in to share in the celebration. Lori, the crab killer from our last video, also joins us. Our hunter today, he actually went home already because mm -hmm. he's been up since 3 a.m. He and his dogs are tired, but the dogs did get to eat some of the pork before they left. I want everyone hey. to know. Oh. Uh -huh. Lori? Yes. Have you had wild boar before? Yes, I have, but not like this. First time? First time. Let's try it out. This is beautiful. Big, fatty pieces of pork. I would say. Yeah, that's delicious. So the best part is the fat. The fat actually has an outstanding texture. It almost tastes like soft meat. What is that? It's cassava. That's another Bohemian specialty. Mm -hmm. Love cassava. That's delicious. It's savory, peppery, juicy pork. Vegetables are perfect, not mushy. This is like perfectly al dente. What is this one? The pepper pork. Pepper pork. It's basically a stewed pork dish made with onions, potatoes, plantains, tomatoes, bell peppers, herbs, and lime juice plus the boar meat, which has already been seasoned with salt and pepper. Add water, butter, seal it up, and let it steam. This is so good. Big, beautiful chunks of pork. Mm. I love the gravy, the consistency of the gravy. Mm -hmm. Very tomatoey. It's got some pop. That's what I like about food here. A little bit of goat pepper, the habanero, a little bit of heat, but not too much. Emerson, you cook this whole thing by yourself. Yes, sir. That's wild. I want to try this liver right here. Scoop that on my plate. Sauteed liver with carrots, peppercorns, vinegar, onion, sweet pepper, and garlic. I'm ready to try the liver because I have never Please. done so before. Oh, it's delicious. It's like classic liver and onion. Mmm. It's something I never really ate growing up, but I love it. Beautifully sauteed, savory, soft. You're a great chef. Thank you, sir. So it seems that the crabbing is just a lot easier, right? Thank Catching you. a wild boar. Real hard. So right. what part did you do? Let's be honest. The dogs, they're doing all the work. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people always talk about organic, but then those same people don't like hunting. But this is an organic pig. It's basically like a whole foods pig. It's chilling out in the mangroves, it's eating oranges, it's very healthy. And this is the way our forefathers live, by hunting and going out in the sea and catching their meals. You know, they didn't go into the store and bought their meals, they actually went out there and they hunted or they fished. <laughs> oh, shit. If I see a crab, I'm gonna yell crab. Some may see the Bahamas as a money trap overrun with tourists. Do you have a conch? 
Yes! I say, Grab. in the Bahamas, you'll find whatever oh, you're looking for. <laughs> While you disembark your cruise ship and suck down a multitude of Bahama Mamas, just know that there's another side to this island, beyond the resorts, beyond the sandy beaches. A side that few visitors have a chance to see. And if you ever get the chance to experience the Bahamas behind the curtain, well, it's absolutely worth it. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. The forest here is really thick. How are you gonna get through? Get down low and up high. Some of the trees you can't uh, take a while to cut them. So we just make our way through anyway. So you figure it out. Yeah. You, but you don't cut it. Man, I love that. Everything I was told yesterday is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this look uh, gorgeous. It's very nice. Do you have any tartar sauce? I actually do. Oh, what, you do? You really want it? <laughs> <laughs> Does it take two people to tie it or just one? You almost said, no, I mean one. That's by my side. Oh my, and what are you doing the whole time? Taking Instagram this, pictures? How long does it take for the poison to like hit? It takes uh, anywhere from inception to 24 hours. Oh wow, faster than the vaccine. It can, yeah. It, it, nice. All right, well you know what? Oh yeah, bottom mode. That's a chance I'm willing to take. Okay. All right, I guess we can finish the You can now. finish them up now? Yeah, All right. I get close ups. The dogs are spraying into the bat. Jerome! sucks. <laughs> Do you think you've built up an immunity? Um, I think I'm immune to anything in the world now. Wow. Living on this island, gotta be. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> there's no hospital. No. And that wraps up our Bahamas adventure. Five videos in five days. I want to say a huge thank you to all the different chefs and local people who contributed to this video today and throughout this series, including Atlantis on Paradise Island. I had a blast getting to know more about the Bahamas and the unique food and people here. And I hope you enjoyed it too. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, peace. What do you guys think of the hat? Keep the hat? Get rid of the hat? It's a, do you notice it's a bandana hat? It's, you get what I was doing there?